Welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio. I'm your host, Christian Rodwell, and this is your ticket to escape the nine to five. We start with the end in mind. We build a vision of what we want our business to look like in 10 years time, what we want our wealth to look like in 10 years time, what we want our lifestyle to look like in 10 years time. Starting with the end in mind with a powerful vision gives us the destination and then we can come up with the route to get to the destination. Why go through the process of trying to work out how to do it on your own? Go through that nightmare when there's litter, there's litters of information out there from super successful people that tell you how they've done it, what they did wrong, and you can learn from that stuff that help you avoid the pitfalls. You see, success leaves clues. Greetings, go-getters. Welcome to another episode of Escape the Rat Race Radio. This week, I'm really pleased to welcome James Jimbo Sinclair, who is the founder of the Entrepreneurs Network. And James launched his first business when he was just 15 years old and from his nan's spare room. And he's since gone on to build an entertainment empire. He now employs over 300 staff and he's got a forecast turnover of £10 million plus this year. James owns a series of play centres, children's nurseries and entertainment farms. He's recently co-founded the Entrepreneurs Network, as I just mentioned, with Mark Creaser, and they've attracted over 200 business owners as members within the first three months of its inception. And James is an accomplished speaker. He's a real barrel of laughs. He's got so much energy, which you're going to you're going to just going to be oozing through the through the conversation today. And along the way to his £10 million turnover business, he's produced a set of practical rules that apply to any aspiring entrepreneur from startup to multi-million pound operation. And he's going to be sharing these willingly with us today. So get ready for the millionaire clown himself, Mr. James Sinclair. So welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio, James. How are you today? Yes, very good. Very happy to be here. Excellent. Whereabouts in the world are you today? Uh, well, I'm actually an Essex boy, so I live uh, down south, but I'm up in the Midlands at our Entrepreneurs Network head office um, just outside Birmingham, about a few minutes from the NEC. And I've been working with the team up here, and I'm up here for three days, and then back down to Essex to, to help run Party Man and do all the things we're doing down there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a busy boy, uh, but I'm at the Entrepreneurs Network head office with the amazing team here uh, helping UK business owners sort of success. That's it. That's it. And I met most, most of the team uh, back in, I believe it was at the end of summer last year at your One Day Spectacular. And what a fantastic event that was. Thank uh, you very much. Yes. So, so for the listeners maybe who are, who are new to James Sinclair, now you've got a lot of stuff going on. I believe you've got five companies in total. And that all kicked off with Party Man, did it? Am I correct? The truth is, Christian, I started my life as a children's entertainer and I built a children's entertainment agency doing kids parties when I was sort of 16 years old and the money that I generated from that I invested into property so I built a little property business uh, and then I leveraged that cash and opened up a children's indoor play center then I opened up some day nurseries we've got farm park theme park now a recruitment company uh, and this business training organization the entrepreneurs network which is our latest thing but we've got locations all around the country right from eastbourne up to chelmsford wembley oxford Stevenage, lakeside basildon so yeah we're, we're southampton so that we operate leisure venues that's our biggest business around the country in the family sector and our model is to add day nurseries onto them so that, that that's the bulk of my big main business so that's what i do in a nutshell there. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's brilliant. So, James, it obviously all began somewhere. So there might be listeners now who are actually, you know, they're still in the nine to five jobs and they really are aspiring to to break out of that and actually start their own business. So what was the, the early days like for you, James? Because I know I can I can sense you always had that entrepreneurial spirit within you. Was there ever a time where you were doing the sort of the day to day job working for someone else or did you always just get straight into your own business? business i had a solopreneur business being a kids entertainer so that's like a swapping time for money business uh, which you know a job is you're swapping your time for money i was working a lot of hours in the early days but i earned very well from it uh, for a young old chap and i just saved some of that money and invested it in something that could be more automated that could work without me doing the day-to-day stuff so no i've never worked for someone uh, i've always had my own business but i did start out if you like as a sole trader which is you know one step up from a job if you like and uh, so you know 
I was swapping time for money then. And I very quickly realized that if you swap time for money, then you're never going to build serious wealth creation and build a business that can provide you with a lifestyle and a pension plan for the longer term view. And was it was it someone like parents or people around you that, that maybe got you into that mindset from an early age? Uh, did you have some influence around you? No, 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 no. My family were were business owners. My mum had MS and she died and that sort of had an effect on me at that early age that I wanted, right, okay, you've got one life. Let's go and make the most of it. You're quite worried about standing up in front of people. I loved making people laugh, loved entertaining people. And I think I had a natural flair for entrepreneurialism and business and those two married together. And then I went and built the entertainment's company and that became the party man company, which, you know, has led on to all the other things that we've done. So I'd really love to find out, James, because we often hear, you know, if you're going to break free of employment and uh, that PAYE lifestyle and and start a business, that you've really got to start something that you love. And what's your thoughts on someone who, who is at the point now where they're just kind of deciding, okay, what is it that I really want to do? What are some of the steps and the advice that you could give them to make sure that they're investing their time and, you know, their, their money? into building the right business that they're actually going to you know they're going to stick with it because we all know the entrepreneurial journey can be uh could be a bit of a rocky road (laughs) to start with can't it yeah well it can be uh you know most people fail there's no two ways about it but people that know what they're doing and that have one thing will always survive and that one thing i will share with you and without that one thing uh it's probably best not to go off in and do this escaping the rat race kind of life and that one word is hunger If you have hunger for success, hunger uh, for making a change, then you will succeed. It might take you a bit longer than you planned to, but as long as the hunger is there, you will definitely get through. You know, the hunger gives you the passion. It gives you the determination to get through the tough times. But if you don't think that you've got the hunger for it, then you will find it very difficult to do. And does that tie into having that future vision, like having goals, really knowing where it is you want to get to? If you've got hunger for success, you will be successful. If you've got a hunger to go and find yourself food, otherwise you're going to diet, you will find yourself food. If you've got a hunger to earn more money and have a better lifestyle, then you will get more money and have a better lifestyle. What lots of people do is they don't actually have the hunger, therefore that's why they don't get to where they want to get to. Hunger is such an important part of an entrepreneur's success sort of, you know, if you really look at successful people, they were hungry for the success and therefore they got the success. They got through those trials uh, and the the damn time and the the people knocking you, the cash flow nightmare, uh, how to get your first client. If you're hungry to get a customer, then you will get a customer. But if you haven't got that sort of attribute within you, then you're going to find it really tough and, in my opinion, more or less impossible. I mean, if you've got hunger to have a lifestyle business, and you've got hunger, then you won't be building a big-scale business that controls you. It's such a, a, a fundamental reason why entrepreneurs you know, hit success. And if you haven't got that, then you can't build on the other things. Before the vision, before the goals, you've got to have determination, You know, hunger, determination, same mean, different word. But if you've got determination, then you can start to build plans for the next stage, which I'm, I'm happy to share with you. Yeah, no, please do. If we've established that we've got hunger and determination for success, then we need to come up with a set of plan uh, for success. Now, there's no overnight success story whatsoever. I've not met anyone that's been an overnight success story. I was talking about this earlier. Even if you look at someone that's won the X Factor, you think, oh, blimey, they they won the X Factor overnight. Within a few months, they become super-duper famous. But what people might not realize is they went to drama school, first of all. They were going around all the pubs doing the gigs, learning their craft, and then they've got on the X Factor that's given them that final or leap so they could be a 10-year success story and that in effect is a really quick way of finding success i believe for you to be at the fastest rate possible to have an overnight success story you've got to invest a decade into it that's my overnight sort of success story formula and we sort of teach that here at the entrepreneurs network we come up with a plan that in 10 years time we will find serious wealth now you can get some decent income uh, quite quickly but we want to build people up to have a really decent basis a, a business that's a commercially profitable enterprise that works without them in it and we've been that you can come up with a 10-year plan So number one, we start with the end in mind. We build a vision of what we want our business to look like in 10 years' time, what we want our wealth to look like in 10 years' time, what we want our lifestyle to look like in 10 years' time. Starting with the end in mind with a powerful vision gives us the destination, and then we can come up with the route to get to the destination. Once we get that, we come up with a a formula that I believe is the One formula that builds a successful business, which I call E plus M equals S, that's entrepreneurship 
class management equals success. So you are the entrepreneur. Uh, and if you're not very good at managing the day-to-day -day business, you have a plan to get in a manager that will help you grow that business. Because there's two elements to a successful business. There's the entrepreneurial part. That's the leadership part. That's the long-term thinking. That's the thing. What, what are we going to achieve in 10 years? How are we going to achieve that bit is the management. Now, some people are good at managing, getting the day-to-day -day done, making the things happen that the entrepreneur has chosen. See, the entrepreneur gets rewarded for, re -roll, for rolling the dice, deciding that a journey is going to be taken. They're getting in the car. They're turning the ignition to get somewhere. But they might not be the sat-nav that gets them through that journey. So the management is a real crucial secret success formula. See, I'm not very good at managing businesses. I'm very good at starting businesses, but I'm not very good at running businesses. And if you're not very good at running businesses, that's why you might think that you won't do very well. And that's why sometimes it's better than joint venture. So you've got an entrepreneurial person and a management person. You fuse the two together and then you create something really good. So if you get the E plus the M equals the S and you've got the powerful vision in the first place, then you can start building a great big, amazing team that can take your business forward and then you get some three my three important kpis where you track your monthly profitability you track your average customer value you track how much you're spending on labor then you're going to start building a really successful business that's fantastic advice there and in terms of going from solopreneur where you're just doing everything you're on your own and you're probably working twice the amount of hours yeah. you were in your job but that transition because you've got over well, 300 employees now working for you but obviously there was a point where you had to employ your first employee so when do you take that step when do you know it's ready uh, it's a question i get asked of me quite a lot actually christian so i teach entrepreneurs how to grow their business, how to be successful. And they go, well, I can't afford someone right now. So let me tell you what I did. I didn't pay myself anything for a couple of years and I invested all of my money into employing great management to manage my businesses. Now, the return on investment has been huge because now I'm doing very well and I earn from my business, but I've also been I'm doing that because I invested in management, great people that are far more talented than me in running a business. And that is crucial, you see, but they come and work for me. They believe in me because I had a powerful vision. You might not even have enough money to employ them. So you're going to be, imagine that, you know, you look at a company chart and at the bottom, you've got all the technicians, the workers that run a company. Then the next thing, you've got the heads of departments. You might have the head of HR, the head of sales, the head of operations, the head of business development, the head of marketing, you know, all of those things. And then above that, you've got the managing director. Then above that, you've got the shareholders and the owners. Now, when you start a business, you might be the technician, the worker, the head of accounts, the head of finance, the head of HR, the head of marketing, the head of sales. You wear all them hats, but also you wear the hat of MD and you also wear the hat of shareholder. Now, if you can start with the end in mind, knowing that you are going to start giving them hats away to other people, that you're then going to become the, you're not going to be a technician anymore. You're going to be just the heads of departments. Then you're going to start giving away the mark, um, the marketing and the finance and the sales, and you become an MD, and then you become a shareholder. And I believe that is achieved over a 10-year plan. This is why it's not an overnight success story. But if you start with the end in mind, with a plan to bring people in, I say the first one that all entrepreneurs should bring in is bring in a bookkeeper. You can employ a bookkeeper for £20 an hour, £25 an hour, even £30, £40 an hour. This is not an accountant. This is a bookkeeper that comes into your business and does your books, that could be a really wise investment because they would have seen other businesses and they'll be able to tell you where you're going right and what you're doing wrong. And that can be a real smart thing to do. So then you've got rid of one hat straight away on a part-time basis. So you're no longer looking after the finance. You've got your finance really under control. And then you could then start bringing in an administration person. So then you get rid of the administration and you start putting in person one at a time, one at a time, so that you eventually become the manager of the heads of the departments. Uh, and then you look for someone to replace you so that you become a shareholder. Then you've built a business that's so successful that you can go and sell the thing and make a lot of money and then become an investor and off you go and you build a fantastic life. But if you're doing it at great guns, you can do that in 10 years. That's my view. Does that answer the question, Christian? It absolutely does. And it, it, it reminds me a little bit of uh, the E-Myth, you know, a fantastic book by Michael Gerber. And he really talks about, you know, looking at your business as, uh, you know, a franchise model. So what are all the processes that are, that are required? And as you rightly say there, you know, who can I get to run all those different areas as quickly as possible to relieve me and give me that entrepreneurial time to really think of the bigger picture of the business? 
You want to do the thing that makes the most money for your business. And being the entrepreneur is the way you grow your business. But you can't just build a business on entrepreneurial talent alone. You need management talent as well. Um, because entrepreneurs are not consistent in, you know, if that's bits boring, you know, writing an operations manual, then you need to bring management that actually, like, and someone that loves administration will love to do that, but they won't want to go out there and raise a million quid and, you know, make people believe in their business plan. So, you know, it's different, you know, horses for courses, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So James, I'm really keen to find out a bit more. You launched the Entrepreneurs Network. Was it last year or the year before with Mark Creaser? We're not even a year old, my love. We are, wow. We're <laughs> rocking into 10 months. And we've obviously uh, we've got 300 members now. Uh, we've got 20 people in group coaching with me where I'm coaching them on a higher level rather than a basic membership. Uh, so they're spending you know a lot more time with me and my team to help them understand the pitfalls that lots of entrepreneurs go through. Basically, you know, based on my experiences and my knockbacks, giving people really good strategic advice, which we do at base level. It's just when you do group coaching, you're sort of held a bit more accountable, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, we're like a business coaching organization, one to many rather than one to one. Obviously, we don't charge thousands of pounds a month. We charge you know, a minimal amount, which is probably the same price as at most, less than most people's Sky TV contract, you know, but what they're getting for that is real good value and learning from us. And if they implement the stuff, they'll sort of success. And that's the key, isn't it? It's the implementation because the uh, statistics don't lie in terms of the population, the, the amount of people that dream of this financial freedom, financial independence compared to the amount that actually ever make it. And, uh, and what do you think that is? Do you think that literally comes down to the hunger that you mentioned or are there other key factors that you see that hold people back, such as you know fear and limiting beliefs? Yeah, I think you've covered a few there. So, um, there is another one. So yeah, if you're hungry, then eventually, if you're hungry for it, for success, and it's all you think about, eventually you will find it. It's just how you can speed up that process. But most people find wealth by the time they get 65. They've paid off all their mortgages. They've pensions have matured and blah, blah, blah. And then you've got a few years left and you're getting older and you then square it away because you're worried about running out of money, all that sort of stuff. What I'm saying is people can actually find financial freedom in within a couple of decades rather than five decades or if they really try and they'll find it in a decade and that, that's what i believe so what's the things that stop them from finding proper systemized commercially profitable business that works without them in it number one you're, you said mindset uh, people haven't got the mindset for doing it yes they haven't got the hunger for doing it so therefore they'll never do it but there are people that do have the hunger for it that work really hard but never quite manage to do it and that is because they haven't invested time into the right education learning that will help them make better decisions see entrepreneurs seek opportunity and this is i mean you get you, if you're listening to this soon stop listening get a dictionary out and look up the word entrepreneur and it will say seeks opportunity that's what an entrepreneur is but the problem is you get thrown opportunities that are just the wrong opportunities they are time suckers that don't actually give you the plan of where you want to go in your life now, to be successful is just not good enough you need to say i'm going to be successful because of this and uh, you don't need to know the what why and how that's really important and so be coming up with that really good plan with starting with the end in mind that so you're not like littered with the stupidest of opportunities because we see this all the time entrepreneurs taking on stuff that just doesn't work but that they create businesses that are very me too low barrier to entry everyone's bloody doing it they're pound turning businesses i mean that's another classic mistake of entrepreneurs they take on a business that just turns money that will never make a profit and they're trying to compete with people doing massive scale businesses that turn billions to make millions when they're turning businesses that just turn a million and they're making what is basically the same sort of salary as what you would go and work in a supermarket and actually you earn a higher hourly rate working in a supermarket that's because of bad business education so how can you get better business education well listening to stuff like this investing time listening to stuff like this and now the information for excellence is out there in abundance on the internet and the best thing like i did you read books i mean if you read a book a week on business by people that have been there and done it you will start educating yourself and understanding the right stuff that you need to do at base level. So can you invest £10 a week in a book and learn from that book? I'm sure you can. Why go through the process of trying to work out how to do it on your own? Go through that nightmare when there's litter, there's litters of information out there from super successful people that tell you how they've done it 
what they did wrong, and you can learn from that stuff that help you avoid the pitfalls. You see, success leaves clues, and we want to follow those clues and, you know, and expedite the process. And that's what we do here at the Entrepreneurs Network. We we do that very well, but you don't have to join our membership organization. I'm terrible at sales. You can just go and read books as well, you know, or look at YouTube or follow some people. I mean, Richard Branson does a blog. You know, all of these super business owners, they've got LinkedIn profiles, which you can follow. You can learn stuff stuff from them then implement the stuff that they've done went on a little bit there christian i'm sorry i'm very passionate about this stuff <laughs> brilliant and and obviously i must mention that you know your own book the millionaire clown is is really there to provide the essential business rules for any entrepreneur and uh, we've covered some of those steps in, in our conversation today but i'd highly recommend anyone would go and grab a copy of, of your book as well I mean, you've just said that there's no shortage of information in this day and age. I think what we're lacking is a lack of direction, isn't it? And that's where the communities and the support networks and, and the coaching and mentoring really comes into its own. Well, the dangers is with unlimited information out there. For example, I just want to pick up on one. Uh, Christian, you started on residual income, for example. This just gives you a classic example of why it might you've got to make sure the information works for your business. So people hear me talk about residual income. Now, I try to force residual income on one of my businesses. Like, for example, I've got a bouncy castle business. Well, I used to have a bouncy castle business. There were some massive problems with that. It was a very me too business, uh, low margins. The stuff depreciated. Your competition was everywhere. To turn that into a residual income business where you say, oh, pay me £100 a month and I will deliver you a bouncy castle every month. I mean, you might find two or three people out there that might sign up to something like that, but very difficult to do. However, if you set up an insurance brokerage firm or you buy a house and rent it out, they are naturally recurring residual income businesses. So what you cannot do is listen to someone like me that says that residual income is the stress buster of business, which I do actually massively believe it's one of my keynote phrases but you can't turn something that isn't a residual income business into a residual income business so you've got to invest time listening to the right people pick up the right information and then actually implement it into your business if it works in your business and um, now what i've done going with back with the residual income because i've got a leisure business it's, you know it's very hard to get people signed up into a membership basis to join our all of our sites on a on a membership basis, but I added day nurseries next to them. Now that is a residual income business. You sign people up, they pay you every single month, and everyone gets that's what it is. Uh, and there's lots and lots of stories about you know stuff like this where video might not work for your business, but it might work for another business. Oh, there's loads and loads of stuff. You've got to really take the information and uh, you know not get excited about oh my god if I just do this it's going to completely change my life because it might not work for your business. Now there is some key foundations that work in every business, but you know really really need to. Make sure that this stuff works for your business. And would you say that the times we're in now with obviously the, you know, the explosion of social media over the last few years, would you say it's now easier than ever to be able to get out there, you know, choose a lane and get a business, you know, and get it profitable? Or is there now even more competition than ever? And so do you look at it as more opportunity or more competition? How, how should someone look at that? Chris, I agree. I think both. But the problem is most people are not consistent. And that's the big thing, you see, because people make a start, but then they don't consistently continue it. So if you are going to do daily videos or weekly videos, if you do it, eventually you will win because the others will teeper off because they're not getting immediate results. And that's the thing. There's lots more marketing channels. Everyone can be a broadcaster. It's whether they consistently do it. You know, people watch soaps because they're consistent. But if the soaps then just weren't there for three nights of the week for a couple of weeks, people would stop watching in the soap and you've lost the consistency so if you are going to be your own broadcaster and write your own articles and do things it's got to be done consistent that's how you will win one example of that it's just building habits isn't it and i know that every friday you send out a video to all of your followers and you know i really look forward to receiving that every week and uh, that's just a you know if you can't start with a small habit like that then you know then uh, you're going to struggle aren't you with uh, <laughs> building that consistency in the rest of your business there's lots of people that want to do business advice and business training around the world. And I think arguably that the guy that has been most consistent of this of late is Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, every day he's doing a daily video. Who else is doing that? I mean, I do know of a couple of other people. I don't want to mention their name in case they don't do it consistently, but I, I don't mind mentioning Gary Vaynerchuk because if this gets listened to in nine months' time, 
that guy will still be doing it. I, I'm pretty sure of it. Because he's consistent, he's built probably the biggest following for entrepreneurial business success out of anyone else in the country. You know, there are Richard Branson's doing regular Twitter and Facebook posts, and he's got other people that are making sure that's consistent. But, you know, he's consistently marketed himself over sort of five, six decades, and people would think of him as, you know, pretty much the go-to business saviour of the UK, I would say, based on consistency. Again. Yeah, very much so. We actually had Nick James on, on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, who's bringing Gary over in May. So uh, we shall uh, we shall look forward to that indeed. So James, if there was ever a guest that I've had on Escape the Rat Race Radio that I can ask the question of, are you up for a bit of fun? I think you're the man. <laughs> yeah, go for it, go for it. So James, we're going to have a bit of fun now. We're going to go into our quick fire round when I'm going to going to ask you a few questions and I just want your your first thoughts on these ones. So for our first one here is what's happening? So what's the one app that you've recently downloaded which you just can't stop using? Oh, I'll tell you what, it's my loan calculator, um, <laughs> which is probably really boring. And I'm, so when I'm borrowing money, I want to know what rate it is um, on a monthly basis for my cash flow. So that's a, an app that I absolutely love. Okay. And, and I'll throw in an extra one here. Is there another one that you just couldn't live without that you've that you, that you, almost every day is the app yeah. that you're going to to pages, help you run your business Facebook your life? Pages app, the Facebook Pages app, which so if you've got multiple pages, um, I, in, there's uh, the Facebook Pages app that lists it all down for you so you can see what's going on. Um, I couldn't live without that either. Yeah, it's a winner. Definitely. And the groups one as well is pretty good as well. Facebook gets more of my eye time on internet than anything else. Yeah, it can be a, a, an attention uh, sapper, can't it? So uh, yeah, it, there's a right time right. and a place. <laughs> All yeah. right, so firing into the next next question then. Mentor the mentor. So we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our mentors. And what would your advice be, James, for our listeners if they are looking to try and find the right mentor for them? And you currently have mentors at the moment. And how did you go about finding them yourself? So I've never had uh, one mentor but I have had lots of people that I absolutely love and turn to advice for. So Andrew Wolf, you know, is a very successful business owner that uh, in the last four years, he's become very much a, a good guy that I sort of take advice from. He's a farmer, actually, but he's got really good morals and advice. So I listen to him. Entrepreneurs Network members, I learn from them, even though they might not have big businesses like I've got, but I've definitely picked up stuff from being around other business owners. They've become like hundreds of mentors around me as much as I am to them. So I think having a real tight network around you and around yourself by other business owners but also i would say richard branson you know i've read all of his books and i've learned lots from his books i've read the abathetus's book i've read other business owners books all the dragon dens lot books so alan sugar's but i've read them and i've listened to their books as well and they become like a mentor as well so no i've never had one mentor but i have sucked up knowledge from other successful people and there are lots of others that i haven't mentioned that uh, i absolutely love and have used information from them i've always surrounded myself by bigger business owners than i have as well than i am that are in leagues ahead of me and learned from them so straight into rejection Recall. So every entrepreneur's experience bumps in their journey. Can you recall the biggest rejection or low point in your business, James? And how did you bounce back from that? Cash flow has always been, when you're growing a business at scale, cash flow can be one of the most stressful things and not being able to get the right finance for your business. That can really knock you for six. And knowing how to raise finance and get through a cash flow crisis in the early days of a business can be absolutely vital, but also horrific at the time. That would be my worst night. Sleepless nights have always been through you know, managing cash flow and maybe over trading and doing too much at once in the early days when you're just doing op- every opportunity that comes your way. They can be really tough. So, James, the last one in the quick fire round is daily discipline. So, what's the one habit or activity that keeps you focused and on the path every day? Well, I think, Christian, the answer to that is uh, I, I don't have a daily ritual like some people have. But what I do do is I get stuff done on a daily basis. I, I, I'm very strict with myself to make sure that I'm continually moving forward, continually progressing, growing our companies and doing things that actually make things happen. I definitely sit on the business and look for opportunities that fold into our existing empire that meet our criteria. Uh, but I'm also very, you know, very strict on making sure there's people in the business as well as I am on the business because it's, it's really Really important that you manage the on the business and the in the business and I'm constantly looking for great people to manage the in the business while I'm on the business and I discipline myself to make sure that that's happening on a daily basis. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you for those answers. So, so we're nearly at the end of the interview, James, but I just want to ask you, for those people who are listening now, they may be on the bus or in the car, they're on the way to work and they're really thinking about starting their own business, but something's holding them back. Maybe it's the fear of leaving a secure job or a regular paycheck. What's your piece of advice for, for our listeners? Well, my piece of advice for that is whilst you're working for someone, start your business whilst you're working for them. Work the weekends, work the evenings, get up early and work in the morning and then you can start building the business. And then when you leave the job, you've already got some foundations in place so that you, you, it's not such a struggle in the early days. I mean, that's you know very easy to do. And that, that comes back to the hunger. If you're not hungry to do that, then don't do that. Stay in employment. But what I would also say about employment, employment isn't the safest place to be. Having your own business is far safer because you control your destiny. A business can go bust or they can make cutbacks, make you redundant. And of course, lots of people start businesses born from redundancy, born from losing their job because their safety net they thought they had is gone. And now they realize they have to do something and therefore they go and start their own business. And that's my view on that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a final thought on that on that very subject, James. With obviously the, the speed of technology, the way it's moving now with artificial intelligence, robots, are some of the traditional jobs just simply not going to be there in the next five years? I don't know. What I do know is that where people said that that would happen before. So, for, for example, websites have taken jobs from retail, for example, but now there's lots more delivery drivers delivering stuff. Uh, and as technology progresses, we're going to need more programmers and people to build technology. The tech industry is now bigger than it was 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Like the need for video uh, on social media. There's more people making video, editing video than there was um, a decade ago, and there'll probably be more in 10 years' time. So, you know, I think as things develop, the actual jobs change depending on where industry goes to. The job of the entrepreneur is to be always on the lookout for those new opportunities. Yeah, you want to be changing with the times um but not losing your traditions that have worked so that's very important because lots of people just go to the new rather than what's been successful it's one of our sort of phrases that we say here at entrepreneurs network we you know people focus on the new rather than the successful way too much so they build a yeah. new business when they had a successful business but it just got a bit boring and then they use their business as the vehicle to solve their boredom when really you need to go and get a hobby to solve your boredom not use your business to do that so really the message is just take action and get started because uh, it might not be the, the business that ends up, but at least if you get started, you'll start making, make your first mistakes and you'll learn from those and you'll start to get the direction and, and feel for what it is you really want to do. Yeah, but, but I always say before you start, you know, build a business that actually is something that someone wants to buy, is a business that can scout, that, that's very important. That's a great piece of advice to uh, to end our conversation today, which has been an absolute blast. I've really, really enjoyed speaking with you, James. You've shared so many insights, real, real life entrepreneur, entrepreneurial on the ground advice there for our listeners. Highly encourage everyone to subscribe to the Friday video. I, I certainly look forward to that. Cheers. It brightens up my Friday afternoon, that's for sure. So, James, thanks once again. And I wish you a very, very successful 2017 and beyond. So unfortunately, we had a slight technical hitch towards the end of that interview and it, it cut off James. So I'm afraid there's a slightly abrupt ending there. Dear James did let everybody know that if you enjoyed listening to him, you can connect via the Entrepreneurs Network. And the best place to do that is to go to entrepreneurs-network.co.uk you can subscribe to James's weekly video newsletter, which comes out every Friday afternoon. I highly encourage you to do that because it's always packed full of great nuggets of wisdom there. And of course, James can be seen at events. They host the One Day Spectacular, which comes four times a year. And all the details and the dates will be on the Entrepreneurs Network website. So I learned a hell of a lot from James. It was really, really good to get his on the ground, hard hitting, real life entrepreneur advice there. There's no textbook stuff. But of course, if you do want to read the book, then of course, The Millionaire Clown is James's book. And that goes through the rules of success for any want to be aspiring entrepreneurs like yourself perhaps. Okay, so we're coming to the end of another episode of Escape the Rat Race Radio. I hope you enjoyed the interview. If you did, please do leave us a review in iTunes. 
it's a little bit tricky. The way to find it is to actually search for Escape the Rat Race Radio again within iTunes Store, and then it will pop up. Even if you're already subscribed, you need to do that. Search again, pops up, tap it, and you'll see the reviews. I would really appreciate if you could leave a review and let me know that you've really enjoyed all of the guest speakers that I'm inviting along to share their journeys and their stories and helping you to make that transition out of your nine to five and starting a business that's centered around your passion, something that you love, that you really want to do every day. You're leaping out of bed because you can't wait to get cracking on your business. So with no more left to say, I will sign out and I will bid you a wonderful week. Bye.